can we stop like the sponge wars? I feel like every brand is just trying to come up with like the most ridiculous new sponge shapes. All right, so today it is Shadow and Shamu's time. I feel weird filming, I'm filming obviously the intro after I've like filmed this whole video and we get a little emotional in today's video. Uh, yeah, here we go. Sorry, I didn't see this. I didn't see this video turning that direction, but it did. But if you're new here, this is where we just chat. I answer some of your questions and I do a full face of makeup. And also I'm trying some new products in today's video. Also updating on some others I've been trying. I hope you enjoy. If you do while you're watching, you can give it a thumbs up. I also do shadow and schmoozes typically every month. So I have shadow and schmooze playlist down below as well if you missed the last one. Here we go. All right, I feel like we've got some good lighting right now. I have like five massive windows in front of me. So I pretty recently did like a testing new makeup video. I'm gonna save my updated thoughts on those products for an upcoming speed reviews video, but I do have some new makeup to test in here as well. I don't have anything on my face right now. I'm gonna go in with the little sample size of the Milk Makeup Pore Eclipse Mattifying Primer. I just wanna see if this does any blurring. I'm just gonna put it right around my pores. I don't really need any major mattifying on my face, but I do have a new foundation I'm gonna try in this video. So I'm filming this in Arizona. I'm doing trusted house sitters, which I talked about before, but it's basically where you get to stay in someone's house for free and hang out with the dog or cat or whatever animals they have. For me, especially right now, that's like super ideal because I get to stay somewhere for free. A lot of the houses on there are like very nice. This one is, there's a pool and everything and I get dog time in and then they get someone to watch their dog while they're on a trip. So it worked out great, I'm loving it. Arizona is a little toasty in the summer, but that's okay. We're just basically, you have to wait until the sun goes down at night to go out and go out like first thing in the morning. Okay, yeah, understand the mattifying. It has like a very dry, almost like pottery feel. I don't see any blurring happening. I'm guessing this is more of like an oil control kind of product, which I don't get super oily. So I'm actually gonna skip this. I don't think this is, you know, really made for my skin. I just wanted to see if it was blurring. So instead I'm gonna put the Charlotte Tilbury primer all over my face. This is awesome. It's SPF 50 and primer. I've been really liking this. It's super glowy and pretty and it looks like it's gonna be like a scary SPF when it first goes on because of the white, but then it totally absorbs in and just gives you like a really pretty glow. And it just feels like a lotion really, very glowy and under everything I've tried it with so far, it's looked really nice doesn't have fragrance, which I like. And I also just like the packaging. It's like very quick and convenient. Okay, let's talk about things. We're doing a shadow and schmooze here. It's hard to talk when I also have new makeup, you know? Okay, hold on. Let me talk about the foundation so I can put that on and then we'll start chatting. I'm actually undecided right now which one of these I'm gonna use. So this is the new Lancome Tint Idol Ultra Wear Care and Glow. I got the shade 330N. Let me just check this because I got it to be a self tanner shade, but it may be too, too, oh, that's definitely too dark, whoops. This I tried yesterday and just off of first impressions, it was really pretty. This is new from L'Oreal. It's their Age Perfect Balm. It's a tinted balm, firming serum. I got the shade 20 light, which was a really good shade match. It looks darker in here, but I think I'm gonna use this because this was like a really pretty natural, your skin but better kind of thing. I need to exchange that for a different shade. Been loving my makeup bags, by the way. I'm gonna use my Haley's Beauty Foundation brush and I just, went in here last time and used a brush with it. I did try it with my fingers and I liked it better with the brush. This is like a, kind of exactly what it sounds like. It's just like a very lightweight, super natural, glowy balm kind of formula. And it did transfer, that's the one thing. It definitely feels like, like a tinted serum. So like when I touched my face yesterday, it was kind of coming off on my hands. But if you just like really, natural looking and even out your skin tone, but super glowy and pretty. So far I'm liking it. All the makeup I'm trying, I'll give updated thoughts in the speed reviews. Okay, so on my second Atlanta vlog, I got a really good question or comment from one of you guys about something to talk about in Shadow and Schmooze and a lot of you thumbs did up. So I figured we'd chat about it. So she says, I've really enjoyed seeing the shift from workaholic Taylor <laughs> to doing what's best for me, Taylor. Random question. I've wondered if you saw a major difference in income and opportunities when you stopped doing three days a week, my three days a week upload schedule, or was it basically the same? Obviously you are doing great and can do all the things you wanna do. I think it could just be really inspirational for people to see that cutting back and prioritizing your health and personal goals doesn't have to make a detrimental effect on your livelihood. Or if there was a significant difference, how taking a financial setback was worth elevating your quality of life in the long run. Okay, so this is, this is a, like, I feel like I have a lot to touch on here. So this was a really good question that really made me think about everything. If you are newer here, 
I'll just give some quick background. So for years, I think like eight years or nine years, I've been on YouTube for 10 years. I worked full time plus YouTube for a big chunk of that. I'm gonna link the video where I talk more about like when I took a break and everything for the first time ever. I, t I go in depth about all of this. So I'm gonna link that video in the eye and down below because I don't really wanna repeat myself here, but I did Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 6 p.m. Pacific time uploads for years without missing a single one through surgeries, through health issues, being functional like one or two days of the week. I would film that in the middle of the night if I had to. I also did 15 days of foundation, which was 15 days of videos in a row on top of those videos. It was very unhealthy. Like looking back, I was obsessed with this image and this like identity that I had attached to myself of being super dedicated, super hardworking. And I thought if I missed a single upload in all eight years or whatever it was of doing that, that it would just crush my entire, like what I had worked for my entire identity. I just thought taking a break was like, it was nothing that I ever even remotely considered. I was like, this is who I am. This is how people view me. And if I stop doing this, I just, I, so much of my identity was tied into my work that I couldn't even fathom doing that ever. Even when I was like, looking back, like I was struggling, but I just kept going and pushing through. That's not something I'm proud of now looking back because it was not healthy at all. And I think actually made my body worse because I was so stressed. I had very little like fun in my life. And that is actually like chemically in your body. If you're releasing the happy chemicals, there's a whole curable podcast episode about this, but if you're having fun or you're doing things that you enjoy and your body's like releasing the happy chemicals, I'm trying the sponge by the way, by Rare Beauty, really a interesting shape. Can we stop like the sponge wars? I feel like every brand is just trying to come up with like the most ridiculous new sponge shapes. I'm gonna put a little bit in my forehead just to like lighten it up. I like this, very squishy. Totally just lost my train of thought. Oh, the happy chemicals, yes. The Curable app has some really interesting podcasts on it that really helped change my perspective and also therapy. So I kind of was doing multiple things in one that like really made me shift my whole perspective on work and my identity and health issues and just all of it. I was I started therapy. I took a break for the first time ever when I had the full disc replacement surgery. Deleted all of the social media apps, everything. Didn't check my email for the first time ever since I like started YouTube that I really truly took a break at the same time as having the full disc replacement neck surgery. And that was 2020 during COVID. And that's when I had the three surgeries that year. So there was just a lot of different things at play that I think ultimately helped me just like change my view on everything. And the podcast, like the curable podcast I listened to were definitely one of them. But I remember specifically this one, I'm going to say this, you know, not in like a medically correct way, but basically when you're doing things that you enjoy doing, your body is releasing dopamine and happy chemicals that are actually anti-pain like it can actually help decrease your pain it's very very difficult to get out of the cycle and i'm talking about this now because it all kind of like intertwines with the work stuff but i found it like super hard to get out of that cycle because i was like literally how do i get to a point where i'm functional enough where i can have fun and like do things that i enjoy doing to in turn hopefully decrease those you know, pain receptors or whatever. But when you're just in a cycle of like being in bed every single day and having a couple hours a day of functional hours, like that's when I would be like, I have to work, I have to film because I'm <laughs> committed to this. And that's what I did. So like when I was out of bed, I was working. Instead of going on a walk and stretching my body and having fun and seeing friends. So I remember talking in therapy about like, how do I get out of this? And I also was doing like, I was doing things at the time that I previously had kind of like shut down. Like I was doing meditation and breathing classes and just like realizing more how intertwined your brain is with chronic pain. And trust me, like when I first heard that, I was rolling my eyes. It doesn't mean that your pain isn't real. It doesn't mean that you're the one causing your pain. It just means that there are a lot of different things at play with like your central nervous system and stress and all this stuff that like previously I'd kind of like rolled my eyes about. And for me, it was like, I had a hard time because I do have still like structural issues that are causing the pain. But what I realized through therapy and all these 
things that I was reading and books and podcasts and curable and all this stuff that I was doing at once. Stress for me is a huge thing because if I'm stressed, it does flare up my neck, which in turn flares up the migraines. I still have things with my body I haven't shared yet on YouTube, but when I took the break, that was like the first time that I really ever was prioritizing my health ever. So I'm really thankful that I did that surgery be just for nothing else, <laughs> just because of that. Because I think like if I didn't have the surgery, it almost gave me like, in my mind it was like, okay, I have like kind of a more valid reason to take a break, which now looking back, I'm like, you don't need to go through like an intense surgery to take, take a break. And I still struggle with that because since then, <laughs> I said I was gonna take a break like I think once or twice a year. I haven't done that and that was two years ago now. So like clearly I still struggle with like taking a break publicly and having it be like an accepted thing. But back then it was like, in my mind I was like, okay, I have a reason that people are gonna understand more than just me stepping away from YouTube. And that's something that's obviously different with YouTube because it is public, so instead of just having a job where you normally, when you get a surgery, you would, you know, take a couple weeks off or whatever. I felt like if I'm not showing my face on here three times a week, people are gonna think I'm just like lazy or don't care about YouTube or whatever. And because my identity was like so intertwined with work, I just simply could not do that. Like that's how I felt was like, no way. And so I remember my therapist being like, you know, what about two videos a week? Like, have you ever thought about scaling back? And I was like, no. Never thought about it. And then I remember when she posed the question of what would happen if you didn't have a schedule? And that was like the craziest thing to me. I remember thinking like, no, I just, I simply cannot. Thank God for my therapist because I would probably still be murdering myself and doing three videos a week and not traveling, not doing any of this. So therapy, life changing. Also, I remember listening to a Curable podcast about my type of personality, very like workaholic type A, whatever. Talking about people with chronic pain and how I was full on in it where like doing laundry was a struggle. Getting the dishes done was a struggle. Doing all of the just daily things when you're in that much, not just pain, but like when you have maybe two hours in the day where you're out of bed, there's so many things that need to be done on top of working and like making a living that you really have to just like prioritize the most important things to get done. And for me, I like to think like I can just do it all and I would, I would like try to do it all and I would do it all at the cost of my body and social life and stress and everything. This isn't sponsored by Curable, I keep talking about them. But the Curable episode was basically talking about like, if you're a perfectionist, like recognizing that someone else can help you and like accepting help. And so obviously that is more difficult if you're single. <laughs> like at the time, luckily I had a like very, very supportive partner through all of this. And I'm, that's still like, I'm so thankful. I mean, I can't imagine going through some of the stuff I went through without having him there so much more difficult if you're living by yourself because he would like help me cook meals and do the dishes if I couldn't do it that day and whatever, you know? You don't have to do it all. If you're a perfectionist and a workaholic and whatever, like hand off the tasks that someone else can do. Things don't have to be perfect. You actually don't have to clean the entire house before one person comes over. And like, I would do that shit. Clean the house, like mopping, that flares up my neck. So it's like, I would do that stuff in order to maintain this like kind of lifestyle that I wanted, but that physically wasn't attainable at the time. I don't know, I think it was really a combo of all of this stuff that I was figuring out in my own mind and kind of like coming to terms with and actually like trying to put into practice, which I wasn't even thinking about my eyebrows. Hopefully they turned out okay. Wow, I like the skin though. The skin is looking nice. Been loving the Essence Powder. Talked about this in the other video. It's so nice. Very blurring and lightweight. It's a super lightweight powder. I've made so much progress. Like if I think back to how I used to be when I really thought about like, how did I make that shift? Because I remember reading these things and thinking like, okay, that's great. But like, how do I mentally get there? And I think one of the things that I realized that really helped me is that there are like certain things that make such little impact or effect on someone else's life that can make a huge impact on your life. So if you are thinking about something with work or with the house or whatever it is, really think about how much is impacting your life versus 
how much it's impacting other people's lives. And for me, like with YouTube, cutting down three videos a week to two videos a week and breaking the schedule and doing all this stuff that was just like so insane to me at the time. It's like so funny thinking about and like looking back now because it's like the impact that three videos versus two videos has on your guys' week is so small. You guys have lives. You have like, you all have your own friggin' lives. And I'm just like lucky that you choose to spend, you know, 20 minutes of your week, twice a week, maybe if you watch my videos every week, like watching my videos, that's so small. 20 minutes of your week is so small <laughs> relative to how long it takes me to put that one video up. Depending on the video, it can take eight to 20 hours for just one video. Then that's 20 minutes of your life versus eight to 20 hours of my life. When I realized that A, you guys don't care about the schedule at all and that a lot of you actually like the surprise uploads better, making that one shift, just decreasing the videos and then not having a schedule, that was huge for me, not having a schedule because still pre-film, I still have not missed, <laughs> I still have done two videos a week every single week since I said I was gonna do that. So I still haven't like, missed an upload even though I don't have an upload schedule but not having the set day and upload time I think was like the best thing I did because it made it so if I was totally out of commission and couldn't get the video up that night it's not a big deal I'm not letting anyone down I'm not letting myself down I am not letting you guys down I can simply just do it in the morning and I think the way that I eventually got there and feel like really good about this now is that like I said I'm still committed like I still haven't I haven't missed one I've done two a week but it's a level of work that is like much more manageable and then the other shift was just like thinking about who am I without work like if I didn't do YouTube or if I say we all didn't have to work like who are you without your work especially in the US we have such a heavy work culture and hustle culture and all of this shit that it's just like amazing how much we tie our or a lot of us tie our like identities and who we are to our work like it can be a good thing and like I've talked about I I go back and forth with like the whole you know how I got here because I I don't think I would have gotten to this point without putting in a lot of the work and stuff that I did earlier, but at the same time, it just wasn't healthy. I look at people in other countries and especially in Europe, man, the amount of vacation days you get and the fact that people, they just, they don't feel guilty for taking time off because they can. It's not like, it's funny because in startups, I remember reading an article with, where it's like the ones that give you the unlimited vacation days, Americans actually take less vacation when you have unlimited vacation days. It's like we have this guilt about not working and it's just not healthy. Work is not life. Now I'm definitely at a point where I'm like prioritizing relationships and family and just things that you're not gonna get back. Yeah, when I die, I might like seeing like dedicated and hardworking on my tombstone or you know, I'm not on a tombstone, but like it would be nice to hear, but I also like wanna be remembered for being a good friend and a good partner and maybe a, like a mom one day or whatever, like having other traits besides being hardworking. I make time for things that bring me happiness and that I enjoy doing, and that's just something that I didn't used to do. With YouTube, one of the things that was tricky for me is that because I, for years, had been like praised for being super dedicated and super hardworking, I was like, A, I'm gonna let those people down, and B, I thought that was like the only way I could really like inspire people and I didn't realize that like by making this shift I can still inspire people just in a different way like maybe to have a better work-life balance or to prioritize your health like if you don't have your health I mean you really can't live a full life and I my just put powder on my heart really goes out to anyone who's like full on in it struggling right now because I've been there and yeah, like with the pain, I am still in it, but I do have so many more good days right now than I have ever had in my entire life. I don't know, again, if it's like the walking more, decreased stress, happier, keeps the, the level of inflammation a little bit lower so that when something does come up, it's like I'm not already up here, I'm down here, so still in pain. Like right now I'm in pain. Took an Imitrex this morning, neck's hurting right now, whatever but it's like I'm having more good days. And just having like those few 
more days per week. I remember saying like in a video a couple years ago, like if I just had one day per week, I would be so happy. And like, that's what I have right now where I have been out all day. And that's something that I literally never used to be able to do. I would have a few good hours in the day. I remember at one point just being like so thankful to be able to go on a walk. I had to change my battery. So I think that was good timing because I I think I pulled it together a little bit more, hopefully. I'm trying to like give advice, but I also like everyone's situation is so different. I can't tell you like how different life is. Still go through my shit, you know, still, still in it, but just having those few extra days, like I can't tell you how much better life is. And I've always tried to make the most out of the days I have and be really like thankful for just having one good day a week or whatever it is. Like you just have to, if you're in this situation, you just have to be thankful for the good days and make the most out of the good days. So right now it's like, if I have those good days where I'm out all day, like I have literally probably five points throughout that day where I'm just like sitting there like, whoa, this is amazing. Just to be out of bed. I still have my lows when I'm in these phases. I'm, I try to remember like, I don't need to force myself to work right away. Like I can take a half hour and go on a walk, which is something I used to not do. Literally would not take a half hour to go on a walk. I'm gonna link like some resources and different books and stuff down below. So if you are in a similar position, maybe something will get through or something will help. I think like for different people, obviously different things might be the thing that like clicks with you. So we haven't done any makeup in like 20 minutes. <laughs> this is the Makeup by Mario Transformer thing. It is so so insanely pretty. I've been using this like every day. But now to actually answer your question about like the financial part of this. Yes, I did decide to take a pay decrease in order to be more functional. For me, I can't put a price on those days. I would pay, okay, I'm sorry. For me, it's like I would pay anything to have good health every single day, literally anything. I would pay it all. It's kind of like a double-edged sword when you own your own business because yes, you are in control of when you work and how much you work and whatever, but at the same time, you're in control. If something doesn't get done, it's on you and you have more control over what you're making because a lot of the times with your own business, it's kind of like what you put into it, not just with YouTube, but with other things as well. If you are investing more time in something, typically, not always, but typically, that's beneficial financially. So yes, I did decide to, you know, decrease the videos. So by doing that, that does affect ad revenue. And then before I was doing three sponsored videos per month because I would have three videos a week. So that was about 12 videos a month. And so out of that, I would have three out of the 12 would be sponsored. So when I decided to cut down on videos, I felt that it was kind of right to decrease the amount of sponsored content that I put up. So I decreased from three videos a month to two videos a month. So that was actually the biggest pay cut that I decided to take because I didn't want it to be like too many sponsored videos for you guys versus the amount of non-sponsored videos that you're seeing. I always try to like really space it out and be conscious of having a lot of not sponsored videos in between then. I am super selective with the brands that I work with and everything that I do that's sponsored is something that I genuinely wanna talk about. But I just felt like if I'm gonna cut down on videos, the right thing to do was to take that big pay cut with the sponsored videos as well. So that's what I did and that's what I've done for two years. So yeah, I would have made a lot more money if I didn't do that. It is what it is. And like I said, I would pay anything. I'm loving the color of dreams, Charlotte Tilbury blush. It is so pretty. The blush is always like different in the pan for Charlotte Tilbury than they actually do on your face. And this is one, like obviously I put powder on, but because that essence powder and the makeup by Mario, they're almost like, they're just very undetectable, so I have no issue putting cream on top of those products, but this is just such a beautiful blush color. I mean, everyone's situation is different, right? So like, it's hard for me to sit here and be like, yeah, take a pay cut because you, it depends on your salary. I'm very lucky that even with the pay cut, I still make a really good living and I've, you know, really killed myself and worked my butt off to get to the position where I am right now, but I also recognize that that might just not be feasible for everyone. But if you are someone where, you know, you could like feasibly take a pay cut, how do you kind of rationalize that in your brain? And maybe you don't have health issues. Maybe you're just like a workaholic and you want to prioritize other things in your life. What I always come back to is like, we have one life, literally one life. And I was watching this Gary Vaynerchuk video 
he posted about like if you think about the amount of time before you were born that you were dead and then think about the short you know 90 95 years 100 years that you are on this planet and then all of the time that's going to come after it is like so insignificant how much time we are here for if you can do something that's gonna like significantly make your life better or make you happier or like just doing something that's for you do it man i think like you just should do it <laughs> really like right now with what i'm doing i'm like this is literally my dream to be able to work remote and travel like that's all i wanted when i was in college was to have a job that would allow me to travel and I'm so thankful that somehow that has happened. I'm like, why am I, why would I stop that right now? And that was another question. Like, how long do I think I'm gonna keep doing the nomad travel thing for? I'm not really putting, you know, like a date on when I need to stop. When I first started, I thought I was gonna be doing it for a few months and then picking somewhere to move to, but it's like, this is what I enjoy doing. Like, I really love traveling. Definitely in the top two things in life that I enjoy, like traveling and food. Love them, you know? To be able to get to do what I love doing, every day like that's such such a lucky thing so like i talked about in the last shadow and schmooze in barcelona if you missed that i talked about like how i'm doing that and how actually right now what i'm doing is basically equaling out to what i was paying before for rent because i don't have like all these expenses i talked about it more in that video but if i am in this phase of life right now where i'm single i don't have kids and this is what i love doing and financially it's like i'm paying pretty much the same as if i was paying rent somewhere, living somewhere permanently, it's like, why not, you know? I'm gonna take the Essence Highlighter, Pure Nude, and just kinda pop a little right over top. We're going for the real glowy skin today. So yeah, right now I have through middle of January planned. I'm gonna be in the US through September, and then I'm going abroad again, which I'm very excited for. I'm going to a few different countries for fall and winter. And then I have one of my best friend's weddings in California in January that I'll be back for. Luckily somehow timed it. So every three months I get injections and I'm timing it so that it's like working out where I'm back in Seattle or in Texas where I can get them every three months. And then also with like visas, there's a whole Schengen visa thing where you have to leave the EU, like the countries on the Schengen visa. You can spend 90 out of 100 days in those countries and you have to wait the 90 days before you can go back. So there's a lot of countries around there that aren't included. We could go to Croatia or Ireland or the UK. If you are someone who's looking to do like long-term travel, just look up Schengen visa countries and you can kind of like figure it out. But yeah, obviously I'm like bouncing back and forth for that reason, but. I also really want to do Japan, so I'm looking into like Japan and South Korea. I've never been there. I have been to China and I've been to Taiwan, which Taiwan I absolutely loved. Like I would totally go back to Taiwan. What's that sound? It's weird when you're in someone else's house and you know like the sounds in your own home or apartment, like you know when it's it's just like a sound, but here you're like, <laughs> what was that? Oh, I forgot. Okay, so I've really been liking this Merit Kava highlighting balm. I forgot I wanted to use this. This is like such a pretty glass skin kind of highlight. I'll just put, I mean, I'm really highlighted right now, but I'll just tap a little bit on over top. It's very natural looking. So if you are someone who wants like the reflective look, but you don't like it to look glittery or whatever, this is perfect. Also the shade Kava, it's like now I know what Kava is after Spain. Like sparkling wine, sparkling white wine. What? Am I doing for eyeshadow? Update on this. I actually really don't like this palette. It's the Juvia's Place, the Taupes palette. It looks really pretty when it first goes on and then it just does not stay on my eyes and the shimmers like super fade. Oh yeah, let's use this. Okay, this is the Hard Candy Bare Monochrome Shadows. This is really pretty. I've been using this. Got this at Walmart for like a few bucks. Funny story. I went to Walmart in North Carolina because I was like, I'm going to do a video of makeup under $5. You know, like I used to do. I used to do those videos couple times a year. Um, inflation is real. Literally, I found only a few things under $5. They were all from Wet n Wild. I think a couple hard candy. And I was like, okay, if I try to do this video, it's literally just gonna be like a one brand tutorial of Wet n Wild. Things that used to be literally three, four dollars are like eight, nine dollars. Insane, man. I mean, it's across everything. We all are aware, we don't need to go into inflation but just like i mean it was wild just seeing it when you you know when you like really know what something costs because you've bought it for years or whatever to see like clearly the jump and how big it is is just crazy anyways this was like one of the few 
affordable ballads in Walmart. I think I actually wanna do like pretty naturalized today because I think I'm gonna do a red lip. I'm gonna like lightly smoke this deeper brown just to smoke it out like at the lash line. And then I might do like a sultry kinda wing or something. I'm curious if you are someone who used to be workaholic and now you have like more of that work-life balance, what was the shift for you? I feel like that could help me out and help other people out too in the comments. Like genuinely think about how you were able to change your mindset or like what you've done differently. It's hard to like break that mindset. And like I said, I still, I mean, I was literally planning my, like working on planning trips and stuff the other day and I was looking at December. And I remember last year thinking like, okay, I'm gonna take a holiday break. But then when I am thinking about like actually taking that time off in December, and communicating that to you guys, I still have a hard time with that. So you guys should hold me to it that I'm hopefully going to actually take time off in December, maybe like a couple weeks, who knows? People take time off for the holidays. It happens every year. If you have a normal job, typically you take time off at least like a few days over Thanksgiving and over the holidays. Like you do get breaks that if you're self-employed, sometimes it's just like you just, keep going. When I take time off, I really need to like actually delete the apps because if not, I just, I'm on autopilot. And if I like open Instagram or if I open YouTube and start looking at the comments, I'm still in work mode. Like if I'm reacting and thinking about comments, like it's not, <laughs> it's not a break. So for me, like when I take time off, I actually need to like delete the apps. I think that's the only way I can like really truly mentally take time off. Update on the Julep pencil. I have been really liking it, but I've mostly been using it to tight line and I feel like it stays on well. It's very black, it's like gel, so it's nice. And you can get the little sample guy for $3 on Amazon. Always with Shadow and Schmooze, I feel like I just talk and talk and then I'm like, did I make a single point throughout this whole thing? I don't know. A few people, especially in vlogs, will ask about like expanding on the dates I go on or talking about dating more. Um, especially like being in your 30s. And I feel comfortable talking about the topic of dating in my 30s, which I have, like I've talked about dating quite a bit recently, but I don't feel comfortable sharing like details of how a date went. I think it's one thing to show like getting ready for a date and whatever, but one downside to YouTube <laughs> and one thing that I really don't like is that it always comes up on dates, like what I do for a living, obviously. They can very easily look up my channel afterwards. It's not that I'm telling them. It's like, you need my first name and then the name of one of the cities I've been and you can find my channel. And I've had multiple guys like text me after and say that they're watching my videos. And it's just like, okay, you know when you go on a first date and you're like the initial excitement of like hearing from them again or talking to them again or seeing them again. It's just different when like they can go on and like see my face in hundreds of videos if they wanted to and go back like years and years. And not only that, but like obviously clearly in this video, like I share personal stuff with you guys because like we've built this <laughs> relationship over the years and you guys know parts of my life, not all of it, but you definitely know parts. And so it's like when you're meeting someone new to just like have them, especially like a potential, you know, partner relationship, like to have them be able to just go back and see all these like intimate, phases and parts of your life and things that you've talked about it's just different than like being able to choose when you share that with people like normally in a relationship you can choose when you want to start opening up about stuff or when you want to tell them about certain things and also just like the initial excitement you know like seeing them again or whatever so it's just it is different with youtube where like they can literally go on after a first date if they want to and see everything and then not only that but like continue to see where I am after and see what I'm doing and see certain things see my family normally like meeting someone's family or just like seeing how their parents are like that's a whole step in a relationship and like you can if you wanted to go on to one of my vlogs and like see my parents and see how they are it's just like those kind of things it it, it is kind of like a little bit shitty because it like takes that away from me and so that's why I always like ask people not to watch the videos but some of them do and then in the back of my mind i'm like kind of like overthinking like oh did they watch this and that's you know it's just like easy to overthink it i just like really respect when people actually stick to it and like don't watch my videos so as far as like talking about how the dates go that you know it does get a little tricky because other people are watching and 
they could potentially be watching. It's a little too personal for me. I always try to keep like a balance on YouTube with what I share in my personal life and there's a lot, like there is a lot that I haven't shared. And even just with like my family, like it's interesting because you know, you guys see what you see. When I was with my grandma, like in North Carolina, I was getting comments on Instagram about like, you know, my family and all this stuff. And it's like, my family is amazing, but there's a lot of stuff you guys have no idea about and that I probably will never share on YouTube because it just doesn't feel like it's really my place. I think it could help a lot of people and connect with a lot of people who also might have similar things going on, but like currently, I mean, we have stuff going on in my family, on one of the sides of the family that is pretty intense. I'm not showing that, I'm not talking about that. And so yes, I'm like super lucky and super thankful to be close with certain family members, but there's also a lot of stuff that has happened, crazy shit, crazy shit over the years. We've got our issues just like any other family. So just keep that in mind. What you see on social media is not everything. It's not the full picture and people choose to share what they share and sometimes it's just not yours to share. Okay, something weird I wrote down to talk about that I just wanna put out there in case like, I just don't know what the F is going on with this. Something happened on July 21st. I went on Twitter and I thought someone had like shared one of my videos because all of a sudden I got like a big jump in subscribers and that usually only happens if like someone shouts you out or whatever. And so I was like, I tweeted, I was trying to figure out who shouted out my channel to thank them. Then as like the time went on, I was looking at the analytics and figured out that, I don't know, this is the only way that I can explain it because I have no idea how this would happen, is that I think someone went on to like one of, there's, there's sites across the internet where you can like buy Instagram followers, buy YouTube followers, and it's pointless because they are empty followers and you don't want to inflate your numbers and engagement because then you're gonna have like higher subscribers and lower engagement. And so it's just all around stupid to do that. Like if you've ever thought about buying followers, seriously, don't do it. It's like one of the worst things you can do. You're like shooting yourself in the foot. I don't know. It seems like when I looked at the, where they were coming from, YouTube does show you like the site where it was coming from. And it seems like that's what might've happened. I have no idea why. I have no idea like what someone's intentions are with that. I have no idea. But as soon as I realized that I reached out to YouTube, sent them like a support thing, and then also reached out to my contact there and told them like, can you please remove, it was like 4,000 subscribers or 3,000 subscribers. And I said like, can you remove these subscribers because they're spam essentially. And I was getting like just weird comments, like, you know, single word comments. And I could just tell that they were like, I don't know if they're bots, like it seems like they're genuinely subscribers, but I don't know, I don't know what's going on. Basically like, I just don't, I, I wanna like say this here so that who knows what someone's intentions were with this. Like I'm just putting it out there now so you know that I am trying to remove these subscribers. I have no idea what's going on basically. And YouTube, I mean, they're going back and forth. They're saying that they're real. And I'm like, can you just remove like the people who subscribed on that date? YouTube, dealing with YouTube, you guys. Oh my God. It's like, to think like the amount of revenue that creators generate for them, it is shocking, shocking that they don't have better support and like a better way to like actually resolve things. So in my time when I'm filming this, I have a few days left in Arizona and then I go to Seattle, see my friends there, but also that's when I'm getting my injections again. So seeing baby Riley, Rach's baby. So when you guys are seeing this video, I will be in Seattle. If you wanna follow along in more real time, you can always follow along on Instagram. That's where I post more in real time. And then after Seattle, I'm going to San Diego. So then I'll be with my parents for a couple weeks. This is the lip I wanna try though. It's the new Maybelline Vinyl Ink. <laughs> That's the word I always have to think about, vinyl or vinyl, it's vinyl. In the shade 55 Royal. So I'm hoping this is like a pretty, maybe fall, dare I say fall red. It smells like birthday cake. Oh, it's looking like a nice like blue based red. For some reason I was thinking this was gonna be like a glossy finish, but I'm curious if this dries down matte. In real life, it's like actually more of like a deep berry red. It feels like it might be starting to dry down. This is definitely making my teeth look white. Like this is one of those reds that does have that tone to it. Still very tacky. It's like not really 
drying down. Here's everything up close so you can see. This is the final look. I'm gonna have everything I used today linked down below in the description box. I hope you guys enjoy. I'll leave my last shadow and schmooze linked down below if you want to watch it and also link the other videos I mentioned, products I mentioned, everything's down there. But I love you guys. Thanks for watching. See you in my next video. Bye.